So earlier today, I hosted a workshop for Covidal Tunes 2020, the, the online version of the Fiddle Tunes Festival, a, a wildcard workshop on getting started with Jam Kazam. And I uh, had some technical difficulties, but I said I was going to record it and post it later. So I'm going to I'm going to just try and uh, try and represent this and see how it goes. Um, unfortunately, I don't have anyone asking me questions live in this, but I will try and remember uh, what kind of questions came up earlier today. So this is uh, kind of a brief overview of how you can get started using Jam Kazam to play music with other people uh, over the internet live, which is something I've been doing uh, weekly or more frequently for the last couple months since we went into lockdown. Uh, okay. So the problem with, so if, since, since we all kind of started isolating because of COVID-19, uh, people have been trying to figure out how to, to have jam sessions, how to, how to play music with other people, how to sing together, how to, how to play old time music, how to play other music together when you can't be in the same room. And I think a lot of people have probably started out trying to use Zoom or FaceTime or Skype or things like that and pretty quickly realized that it just does not work. Um, that it, it is fine for conversations, but uh, there is just too much delay to make um, playing together in sync happen. I had a, I had a birthday party for my nephew last month and there were, I don't know, six or seven of us. And singing happy birthday over Zoom uh, is more of a train wreck than, than that song usually is. So, um, yeah, playing, playing faster music is just not going to work. And the reason is that um, video conferencing software is designed to work for normal conversation, not playing music together. And what that means is that we have, over the last, I don't know, 20 years, gotten used to having more of a delay in our phone conversations than we used to. Um, when everybody had a wired, you know, a copper landline, conversation, you know, the, the conversations that happened were pretty much instantaneous. You, if you heard someone if you were on a call with someone, you were hearing them more or less as if they were in the same room with you, um, just because of the way analog audio over a copper network works. If you had ever called uh, long distance to a country where you needed to use a satellite connection or maybe a transatlantic cable, um, you probably would have experienced weird echoes and delays and conversation was a lot more difficult. That's what I remember about calling Australia anyway. Um, I guess that was the 80s. So technology has improved. Phones conversations are, are better than that now, but cell phones have a fair amount of latency and we've gotten used to that. So when you're, when you're having a conversation on a cell phone, um, you can't really, it, it's not like being face-to-face most of the time, unless you've got some much better phone and connection than I do, there's always an enough lag that it feels a little weird and you feel like maybe you're stepping over each other, stepping on each other's toes um, once in a while. And that's because of the latency, the lag between when what you say is heard by someone on the other end. And I don't know exactly what the latency of a cell phone conversation is. I probably should have looked it up, but um, because we've gotten used to that, teleconferencing software doesn't really try to do much to minimize it. And so you just can't use conferencing tools for much other than things like this, presentations and conversations where it's understood that there will be some lag. Um, 
And even in software like Jamkazam, where it is designed to minimize the latency and, and does everything it can to make it so that you are hearing what people are doing as they do it, uh, there are physical factors that contribute to latency. The speed of light is a limiting factor. If I am, you know, tens of thousands of miles away from someone, there is only so quickly a signal can get to me. Um, I don't remember now off the top of my head what uh, what example I used, but um, I have had successful jams between people. I, I've been in a jam with someone in Bellingham and Portland at the same time, and that worked fine. So I know that it is possible to jam with people who are at least a few hundred miles apart. And I suspect that if everyone has good gear and a good network, you could get up to maybe 1,500 miles apart before things started breaking down just because of the distance. Um, there are people on the forums who report that they're having good jams between like Europe and America. And I suspect that they are playing very different types of music that are more accommodating to lag and, and latency. Um, you know, ambient kind of electronica is probably a lot more tolerant of, of delays than something with a lot of, you know, rhythmic elements that are important. Um, so something to keep in mind, if you play other types of music where latency would not be as much of an issue. Um, one, maybe you can use Zoom or FaceTime. And two, uh, Jamkazam is probably gonna be useful for you over a wider uh, distance. Mostly I play old time music, so I am trying to keep it within a few hundred miles. I set up a, a jam, an open jam for like the Pacific Northwest just to see how we do. And so far it's been okay. Um, the guy who joined from Argentina the other day, we had to mute him. He was too far behind. Anyway, um, so that's the problem that Jamkazam tries to solve, the, the latency. And just a, a quick bit of background on Jamkazam. There are other pieces of software that, that do similar things. This one is the one I'm using because it has the least user hostile interface that I found. It's not exactly user friendly, but it's more friendly than Jamulus or um, Soundjack, which are two other pieces of software that I've tested. So I remember when Jamkazam had a Kickstarter for a piece of software or a piece of hardware they were selling. Uh, I've forgotten what they called it now, but it was a, a little mini computer uh, size of you know, like twice the size of a deck of cards that had an XLR input for your microphone and a headphone output and an embedded computer that was set up and optimized for low latency audio. And there was supposed to be a phone app that would control it. So you could just plug it into your network, plug it into your microphone and headphones, and you wouldn't have to do any kind of computer setup to make Jamkazam work. And they, um, they were successful enough to make and distribute some of those, but not successful enough for it to really take off in 2015, I think when they launched. So the service kept going, um, but since about 2017, I think it had been not used very much and like all the developers left and went to other jobs. I think the founder of the company kept it running just kind of as a, as a hobby. And there were a few people using it still. But according to the news article I read recently, um, after COVID hit and people started isolating and realizing they couldn't play music together, it saw a, oops, uh, like, I think the, the article I read said a 2300% increase in usage. And that tracks with what I saw when I started using it. Um, there were, I don't know, maybe a dozen people online the first week I tried it and then a couple hundred the next week. So um, there was some really rapid growth in March and April and they 
had issues with um, keeping the server running, although those have mostly been fixed. They've raised some money with GoFundMe and now have some, uh, at least one developer who's making updates. They release updates fairly frequently now. So I don't know what their funding model is going to be going forward, but it is currently free to use and they are supporting it a little. I mean, they're not providing a lot of end user support, but they are addressing problems with the server and with the client. So I don't know, I don't know what it's going to be like going forward, but right now it works pretty well and they are working on improving it, which is cool. Um, yeah, and I think I said on the last slide, it's not magic. There are limitations that will keep it from working in some situations. Uh, distance is one and whether your network provider is doing weird things that, that block the service, you know, it, it just will not work for some people. But when it does, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, more setting of expectations. Uh, I already mentioned that the distance is going to be an issue. Um, it, I think of this as something you can use to jam with people who you would have been jamming with in person anyway. So people who are close enough to drive to a, a jam. Um, but like I said, I, I, I had a pretty good jam with someone in Bellingham and someone in Portland, and that's not, those aren't people I would have been playing with regularly, normally. So that's kind of cool. Um, another factor to think about is the number of participants. It, in theory, should support a lot of people, but in practice, um, it seems like five or six is the upper limit of the size of a session before things start to fall apart. Um, and by fall apart, I mean one time when one new person joined, the audio kind of cut out for half of the rest of the people in the session. Sometimes it just means that when a new person joins, not everyone will be able to hear them or they won't be able to hear some other people. Um, so eh, your, your mileage may vary. I, from what I've seen, five or six seems like a good upper limit. But I've been in jams with, I think, eight people that mostly worked. Um, so it might work. Jam Kazam does support video, um, but it's been my experience that turning video on makes the audio quality worse. So mostly when I'm playing with people, we don't have our video on. And playing together when you can't see anyone is difficult. Um, you, I hadn't realized how much I kind of relied on visual cues before this. So also something to keep in mind. It, it's, um, it's, it's a different experience jamming on Jam Kazam when you can't see people. But it's better than not playing with people, in my opinion. So just so you know, I think this is a pretty cool program and service. It's not a magic bullet, and it's not exactly the same as being in a jam in person. So the requirements, um, you will definitely need a Windows PC or a Mac computer. Uh, the software doesn't work on phones, it doesn't work on tablets or Chromebooks. Um, uh, tablets, if you have a, um, one of those Surface tablet that is in fact a full Windows PC just in a tablet form, those do work. I, I play with someone who uses a Surface, um, but you'll need something that runs like Windows proper or Mac OS 10, not iOS or uh, Android. Um, it doesn't need to be the absolute newest computer. Uh, I'm using it on a Mac laptop that's six or seven years old and a Windows PC that's about 10 years old and it works okay there but I, I suspect that maybe if I had a newer computer, it would work better when I turn video on, things like that. 
uh, you'll also need a good broadband internet connection. And I'm using fiber and like it a lot. Uh, cable is also working. I don't know if I have played with anyone who uses DSL, but it, I think it ought to work. I don't know about some of the newer wireless technologies. I've heard things that indicate that maybe some wireless broadband uh, types might work with services like this, but I wouldn't expect them to. A satellite connection is definitely out. Um, it doesn't need to be the fastest service because audio is actually relatively low bandwidth. So, you know, you don't need gigabit fiber. You can probably get away with, you know, whatever the basic cable plan is in your neighborhood. What you do want is something that isn't oversubscribed um, with a lot of people competing for the same network resources. And that's, I, I suspect that is why people are reporting better experiences with fiber than with cable right now. And it's just because fiber is newer and there are fewer people using it. So there are fewer people competing for the bandwidth. Um, and when everyone in a neighborhood is watching Netflix over their cable connection, that's shared bandwidth and, and, and Jam Kazam suffers there. But there's not much you can do about that. So try it with whatever internet you know, provider you have. Um, and if it's something you really want to do a lot of, then maybe it's worth calling around and seeing if there is an ISP in your area offering a fiber connection or um, possibly business cable service would be more reliable than consumer level. Something to think about. Uh, and I put this on the requirements page, but it's not strictly speaking a requirement, but I would say you want uh, a microphone and headphones. If you are using, uh, if you're using like a laptop speakers, you definitely will have issues um, with echo and feedback if it's the same, the same speakers and microphone on the laptop. What you don't want to do is have sound from Jamkazam coming out of speakers going into the microphone that is feeding back into Jamkazam. Um, so my, my setup is I have a pair of headphones and uh, a large condenser, a uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone um, plugged into an audio interface, and that's what I'm using. But I have tried it with headphones and the internal speaker of my laptop, and it's not the best, but it does work. So that's definitely something you could try for starting out, um, just to see if it works at all. I recommend an external mic just because the sound quality is better, but you don't have to get a super expensive external mic either because Jam Kazam is compressing the audio and it's going over the internet and there will be you know, some quality loss there. So it's not like you are needing absolutely pristine, beautiful tone, uh, high-end microphones for that. If you have uh, an instrument with a pickup, you can plug, that you can plug into an audio interface. Um, you don't really need a microphone unless you want to be able to chat uh, with your voice during the session in which case I would recommend getting a, a set of headphones that has a, a boom mic attached um, and then using that as, as the chat microphone. Um, so yeah, headphones and, and a microphone, definitely recommended, not strictly a requirement, but highly recommended. Um, and also, recommended but not really required, uh, an external audio interface. I should have included a photo of one on this slide, but um, I can share, the, I'll, I'll share at the end a link to some resources that have links to some recommended hardware. Um, an external audio interface is just a little box that has you know, inputs for a microphone and instruments and a USB or Thunderbolt or Firewire connection to your computer. Um, 
decent ones will probably have some way of adjusting the volume on the interface itself so you don't have to mess around in software too much. And what they get you is almost always better latency than the audio equipment that's part of your computer. Um, so when you are trying to set up a good session and get your gear dialed in, it's a matter of shaving, you know, milliseconds off of your latency. And um, an external audio interface is going to be one, one place where you do have some control and can tweak things to get a better, uh, a better setup with less latency. So for example, when I'm using my, my Mac uh, and it's, it's built-in audio, um, the latency that's happening just inside the audio interface part of it, where, where it's converting the audio from my microphone into a digital signal and the audio from Jamkazam into an analog signal back out to the headphones, that part is uh, something like 10 or 11 milliseconds. Uh, and when I plug in a mixer that I have that works as a audio, an external audio interface, that brings it down to around four milliseconds, four or five, um, which doesn't sound like an awful lot. I mean, a difference of five milliseconds sounds like nothing, except it, it, if you think of every millisecond of latency as one more foot away from a person you're jamming with, um, it, it just kind of shaving off five actually does make a difference if you're, if you're starting talking about the difference between like 25 feet away and 20 feet away. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to play music with someone in a very large room, but it, it is noticeably difficult at distance because of the speed of sound in air. Um, yeah, I digress. But uh, so an external audio interface is a place where you can make a difference in your latency. It also will allow you to plug in a better microphone than you can plug in just straight to your computer. You can get USB microphones that, that plug in just straight into a USB port. And some of those are pretty good. And I've heard of people using those in Jamkazam, but I don't know. Um, I don't know that I've heard of many people who have, uh, I don't know if I've heard of any people using a, a USB microphone that works as well as just a cheap studio microphone plugged into an external audio interface. So if you have a, an external USB microphone, go ahead and give it a try. It's probably better than a built-in microphone. Something plugged in through an audio interface will probably be better. The other thing, I, I probably should have put this on the previous slide uh, as required instead of nice to have, but a wired connection to your router. Uh, so if you have the ability to plug your computer directly into your router with an ethernet cable, that is going to be a more stable connection than a Wi-Fi connection. Um, the problem again, isn't the, the speed, but the stability. And ethernet is just inherently more regular in how it transmits data than Wi-Fi is. Um, so Wi-Fi is good enough to test with. You can, you can see whether it works at all. Um, just using Wi-Fi, but if you're going to be playing with other people, you will probably want to have uh, an Ethernet connection to your router. If you don't have an Ethernet port on your computer, there are inexpensive uh, USB to Ethernet adapters that work just fine. And the other thing that you that you want to have when doing this is uh, patience. There are a ton of little variables you can tweak. Um, the developers are releasing updates fairly frequently that change how things work. Um, so, you know, even if you've got things set up one week, you might come back and use it the next time and realize that things are crashing or that some option has changed and you can't find it. Um, so having a, a patient approach to using the software is something that you, you would want to have when doing this. 
And I've noticed that a lot of people spend a fair chunk of time in a session talking about their configurations, kind of like ham radio operators often talk about their setup. Um, some people don't like that so much, but I, I have found it helpful knowing what other people have done to make their setup work for them. So if you are in public sessions, you will probably hear a bunch of people talking about what is working for them right now and what their gear is. Um, something to think about. Okay, this is the part that didn't work in the <laughs> session earlier today. Uh, when I switched what part of the screen I was sharing, Zoom stopped letting me share anything at all. So I have recorded that separately and I will try and edit it in here. If I can't get that working, I will just include a link to the separate recording at the end. Um, but hopefully now I will be able to switch over to that other recording and show you what it looks like to set up the Jam Kazam client and just do a really quick presentation of how to join a session. So I'm recording this later and I'm just gonna walk through um, setting up an audio device, uh, an audio interface and um, connecting to a session and just kind of show you some of the options in Jam Kazam. Uh, it'll be a super basic overview, just like a quick start guide, but hopefully it will help a little bit. Um, so assuming that this <laughs> is actually recording my screen, what you should be seeing is the main interface of Jam Kazam and it's broken out into um, these kind of panels that have different functions. And mostly what you're gonna use is this create session and find session panel. But before you do that, assuming you have you know, downloaded the Jam Kazam client, you've signed up for an account, um, launched the client and logged in, what you wanna do first is go up to your user icon and hover over that, which will bring up a menu and you want to click on audio gear. And it will start off with one audio profile that is just whatever is detected for your onboard um, speakers or headphones. I don't really know what this is used for. I Maybe you can use it to listen to sessions, but um, I never use this. <laughs> so what you want to do is make sure that your audio interface is connected and turned on and set up if that is something you're using. Otherwise, um, actually, I will, I'll show both. I will show uh, using the system, like the onboard audio and then a, a, an external audio interface. We'll see if that works since I'm using the system devices for Zoom. Um, I suspect it won't, but I'll find out. So the first thing you wanna do is click add new gear here. Um, it, one thing to notice is that the interface often has these help buttons. And as far as I know, all of them are currently broken because the service that Jam Kazam was using to host their help pages uh, shut down at some point during the three years that no one was really paying attention to Jam Kazam. So none of these help buttons work anymore. Some of them actually might link to the forums, um, but I don't think the ones during the gear setup do. Anyway, as video link might work, I haven't tested it. If you wanna watch setup videos that are produced by Jam Kazam, um, they have a whole set on YouTube and I will share a link to those. Anyway, um, go ahead and click next. It will do this checking gear step and to just to find out what audio devices it can see. It'll also pop up this thing asking you to click here for detailed instructions. I'm pretty sure this button is broken too, so don't bother there. <laughs> but you have two sections here, uh, audio input device and audio output device. And I am going to just this first time choose the built-in microphone and the built-in output. And I have extra devices here because I've been playing around on my laptop trying to get some various things to work. You would, you would probably see at least these two uh, built-in settings. 
once you've picked one of each, it should do this little thing where it determines what the latency is and then does it a little test. If there are any problems at this point um, where it won't let you proceed, what you might want to try is clicking this resync button and it'll just scan things again. Um, but in this case, it's telling me that I have, you know, fair or yellow latency. And the latency is the, you know, the built-in delay for, between when I make a sound and when it's processed and sent on. Um, and so 18.9 milliseconds is not great. It's not the worst. Um, I wouldn't use it in a jam probably, but just as a proof of concept, it is seeing the devices. This second box is green, which I just think means, you know, now that I, now that I've got an interface connected, can I reliably get audio through it? I don't know exactly what it means, the rate and the variance, but in this case, it's telling me they're good. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. Again, ignore the request to click for more instructions. Um, so if you had additional inputs to add, you could do it here. I don't, I don't know exactly how that would work. Um, I've never used this part. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next. And here again, um, if you have an interface that is letting you, for example, plug a, uh, a guitar pickup into it, so you don't have a microphone for your music, you're using a, a direct input somehow. If you want to be able to chat over Jam Kazam, you'll want some kind of microphone. Um, and you could use like a little headphones with a mic like I'm using here. You could have a second mic plugged into your interface um, and you would click this use chat microphone to specify that you have a, a separate microphone for chat than the one you're using for your instrument or than the, the input you're using for your instrument. Um, the reason you might want to do that is chat audio is handled differently than instrument audio in Jam Kazam. I think it's compressed more and it's not as important that it be transmitted with low latency. So the chat audio, if you have a chat microphone, you probably don't want it picking up too much of your instrument um, since you might hear some weird echoes. The other reason you might want it is since they're transmitted separately, if you're recording a Jam Kazam session, it would be recorded as a separate track and you could leave it out of the final recording if you didn't want um, to record the chat. Nah. I always use uh, just a, but yeah, I'm playing acoustic instruments, so I have a microphone that's plugged in to an interface and I'm playing fiddle into it. And so when I chat, I'm just speaking into the music microphone. So that's what I'm gonna leave here as well. Um, this gain slider is if you are, if you need to turn yourself up in chat, I, you can do that later in a session. I don't know why you'd wanna do it in the configuration here. So go ahead and click next. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to hear this. Maybe you will. But when I click play, I should hear audio through the headphones that I told that I was using. And I can. Um, I don't know if it shows up on the recording. If you don't hear any audio at this point, then something is probably wrong and you'll want to go back and check it out. But once, uh, once you've done that, go ahead and click next. It'll say, hooray, success. Go ahead and close that. And now you have a new profile that lists uh, built-in microphone and built-in output. And it'll show you which one is active and it's the active profile right now. I'm also going to add the, uh, the external USB audio interface that I'm using, which right now is a, uh, what is it? It's a Focusrite Forte. They don't make that anymore. They don't support it. It doesn't work super well with Jam Kazam, but it's the one that's easiest for me to get to right now. So I'm gonna add that as well. And it's the same process. You, you know, skip the first stage. It will scan. And I'm going to choose this one at this point, uh, the Forte, which will automatically 
select it as the, the output device as well. If I wanted to use a different device, I could, but most of the time I will not be. I'll have headphones plugged into the Forte. I'll have my microphone plugged into it. I'll be using it for everything. Um, I think I have the mic plugged into the left channel, but it since I might want to plug something else into the right channel, I'm going to leave them both checked. When I'm using Jam Kazam, it will mix those two together and send them as one stream to other participants. Um, so they won't be able to mix me if I have two instruments going at once. They won't be able to mix those two separately. It'll just be whatever signal is coming from me, they can adjust up and down um, as, a, as a mixed stream. So it looks like, interesting, Jam Kazam is not liking this interface very well. The IO rate and variance are red now. Um, so I'm going to try resyncing and see if that helps. Okay, so I don't know what that was. It might have been because I'm running Zoom on the laptop that I'm also running Jam Kazam on, and it's an old laptop, and so the CPU is overloaded. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why that was read the first time, but it's okay now, so it will let me proceed. Um, I can click next. And again, I don't have uh, any other inputs I want to add. And I will be using the music microphone for chat, so I'm just going to go ahead and click next again. And this time, uh, let me grab my headphones <laughs> for that interface. So these headphones are the one that are plugged into that interface. Let me hold them up to the mic here and see if it will play. soft but I can hear that it's going so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next good I can close this window so now I have two audio profiles that I can pick between um, and for this test I'm gonna keep using the forte because there's a, a setting I want to show you uh, since it says it's active I don't have to click the activate button but if if it had stayed on the built-in inputs I would want to click activate for the for the interface um, it has these buttons to configure and delete audio profiles in my experience if you're having a problem with an audio interface it's best to delete it and recreate it rather than trying to configure it uh, when i have tried going back in and configuring a profile that already existed it often got stuck in a state where it wouldn't let me do anything but quit the entire program. So they may have fixed that. I haven't tried it in a while, but something to watch out for. Anyway, now that I have a, uh, an audio interface configured and added, I'm going to go back to the home screen, which is this tiny home icon here. And the first thing you want to do after you've got uh, an audio profile configured is go over here to create session and click on that. And there are currently four options. You've got a quick start solo, quick start open, quick start friends, and start or schedule. Um, and they've got little descriptions of what those are for. For testing things uh, by yourself, you just want to do a quick start solo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And after a second, here we go. In the first column that says my live tracks, you should get a little box that has your account name and uh, some controls. This is a volume control. This is a panning control. And then this colored button, which is important. Um, Ideally, that would be green. 
and it's it's kind of an indicator of how Jam Kazam thinks you are doing. If you hover over it, you can get more information about what exactly is causing issues, if there are any. And inside that, you can hover over the colored dots to get a little more information about any specific metric. So we can see here that the reason my dot is red is that I've got a lot of input and output jitter. Not all the time, but periodic or, or intermittent anyway. And I'm pretty sure that why that's happening is um, that I am using Zoom on the same laptop as I'm running Jam Kazam. And it's, it's overtaxing here. It's overtaxing some part of the laptop. Um, it doesn't look like it's the processor, so maybe it has something to do with USB or something, but this is an old laptop, and it looks like maybe it's not super happy doing both these things at once. If I had um, a browser window open somewhere, I'd want to close that. I just want to like shut down as many things that aren't Jam Kazam as possible for, for the best experience. The other thing that is keeping it yellow is the latency of the interface itself. And there's not much I can do about that on a Mac. There are some things I will show you. Under Windows, um, where there are dedicated drivers from the manufacturer for your audio interface, you often have settings that you can tweak to make the latency better. On a Mac, um, they all use what's called core audio, which is the, the Apple provided audio driver. And there's not much you can do to tweak it. But one thing you can do, and I hope this is sharing the whole screen and not just the Jam Kazam window. But when you are in a session, this, this doesn't work when you're outside of a session. So if you're in a little solo session or in a session with someone else, if you go to manage and audio settings and audio booster, that gets you a whole bunch of options um, for changing how some of the audio works in Jam Kazam. Along the bottom, you've got um, kind of mixer sliders for increasing the volume of various things. I don't know why these are all set at 1.5 by default. Um, and I don't remember if I set this one to 2.5 previously or not. Um, but I'm pretty sure they start out at 1.5 if I think if your microphone is too hot and people are complaining that it's distorting, you might bring it back down to one here. Anyway, for latency, what you can do on a Mac, maybe, is change this audio frame size. And what that is, is how, how much audio your interface is capturing in chunks before it processes it. So according to this, every two and a half milliseconds, it's processing the last two and a half milliseconds of audio. In theory, if I change this lower or higher, I will change the latency. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try setting it to one to see what happens. And indeed, I mean, it's red now because of the jitter, but the audio interface latency has gone down from, what was it, 10 point something to 7 point something. So. Assuming, assuming that it didn't screw up my audio entirely, which it could do with, with um, when you change these settings, it could be that it's processing it every millisecond and it can't actually do that. And so you could get static or corruption or something. And in fact, let me, let me see. What I should be seeing is some sort of signal happening over here. Let me grab the mic. And yeah, when I tap the mic, I'm not seeing this meter go up at all. So I think that didn't work. Um, oops. 
Let me try setting that back to two and a half and see if I do get the meter because I didn't test that. Oh, I know. Hold on just a sec. I forgot to turn on phantom power for the mic. Uh, Okay, and oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, if your audio interface lets, has, gives you a direct monitoring option where you can always hear what's coming through it, um, regardless of whether of what the software it's connected is doing, you wanna turn that off because when you're in Jam Kazam, you only want to be hearing what Jam Kazam is sending to your interface. If you are also listening to the direct monitoring of your interface, then you will hear your inputs doubled with whatever latency Jam Kazam is adding. Um, and if it's very low latency, it won't be that distracting, but um, I don't recommend it in any case. So you can see now though that now that I'm, I've got my microphone turned on properly, this little signal meter, signal you know, level meter is showing that there is sound coming through. And if I listen to my other headphones that are plugged into the interface, in fact, yes, the, the signal from my microphone is coming through the headphones uh, that Jam Kazam is using. It's not coming through these headphones because those aren't the ones it's using. So I'm gonna go back and test that um, audio tweak, audio booster. Change this frame size back down to one. Okay, I'm still getting a visual signal. What does it sound like? Actually, this sounds okay. So it, it seems like I can, with this interface at least, um, use that experimental feature in the boost audio booster and reduce the frame size down to one millisecond and that will help with my audio interface's latency. Um, I will see if I can find some screenshots or maybe I'll take some screenshots of, of how I can change things on a Windows box um, because when the gear driver here on a Mac is core audio, on Windows you'd want it to say, um, Ideally, it would be, I don't know how to pronounce it, ACO or ASIO, it's ASIO, and I forget what it stands for, but it's a type of driver. Um, other options might be WDM or maybe MMC, MMS, I don't remember what they are, but there are drivers built into Windows that you could use, but if your interface has an ACO driver, you, you want to use it because it's gonna provide the lowest latency. Anyway, um, so in theory, I have now done a solo session. I can tell that my mic is working and my headphones and the internet connection is working because Jam Kazam is letting me start this solo session. Um, so in theory, I should be able to connect to another session. And I think if I did this right, I started a session earlier with my other account and invited myself on this account to it. So let's see. I'm gonna leave this quick start session. Every time you leave a session, Jam Kazam asks you to rate it. I think if you uh, give positive or negative feedback, they just know whether the service is working well or not. I'm, I'm not gonna do it right now. So let's see if this invitation shows up in the find session. Yes, good. So earlier under my main account, I created another quick start solo session and invited this account to it. So I'm gonna join that session. There's a terms and conditions I don't care about. Okay, so, excellent. Um, so here is what it looks like when you're in a session with someone else. Still on the left-hand column is me locally on this laptop. But over here in the other live tracks column uh, will be anyone else who's in the session. 
and you get more information on the session for them than you do for yourself. For yourself, you just see, you know, your own processor load and then some stats about your audio interface. For people you are connected to in a session, you also get all these internet latency, um, packet loss, you know, you get all these other stats. And up at the top, you get a total latency number, which is the, oh, is that the one-way latency? Yeah, okay. So that is the, the total amount of time it takes between a sound happening on their end and you hearing it on your end. And right now that's 11 and 12 milliseconds, which is great. Um, up into the 20s is fine. When you get into the 30s, it's less good. And after around 40, um, it's going to be very difficult to keep in sync. So this is pretty good because I am, you know, I'm doing this from two computers in the same house. I, and it ought to be even better than that, but I think it's just because I'm using this old laptop. <laughs> um, but you can see that my other connection, the, you know, the one that started this earlier, uh, has this ACO gear driver, which shows that it's a Windows machine. The audio interface latency is being reported as 4.2 milliseconds, which is great. There's a little bit of input and output jitter, which probably means that I need to quit the web browser on that computer. And then these internet stats are things that you mostly don't have any control over. Um, if, oh, it's showing zero milliseconds because of course I am connected in fact to the same, to the same router with both machines, but it would be, it would be higher than that for any, any remote connection. Um, if you're getting a lot of jitter or packet loss, um, it could be, other things on your network consuming network bandwidth. It could be if you're on like a cable modem, I think the entire neighborhood shares some of the bandwidth. So um, if everyone in the neighborhood is watching something on Netflix, you might see worse performance. Um, there's not an awful lot you can do about that part of things. Um, but you do want to make sure, if possible, that everyone is using a wired connection. Wi-Fi makes things more prone to jitter, and that's just inherent to the nature of Wi-Fi connections. They are not optimized for sending packets at a super regular and reliable rate like wired connections are. Um, let's see, what else can I show you while I'm here? If... <laughs> If you're having issues with not, you know, if you, if you get into it, if you can hear yourself in a solo session, but you get into a session with someone else and either you can't hear anyone or no one can hear you or both, um, there may be some network issues in how port forwarding is happening, it should be automatic. If you've got an ISP that isn't doing extra things, um, I don't want to go to into, into a ton of detail, but if your router at home has an IP address that is public, so on, on the public internet, in theory, how, how this works is when you connect to Jamkazam, the client sends a little pa you know, sends a packet to the Jamkazam server. And when it does that, the Jamkazam server can, can tell where on the network your computer is and tell other people in the session how to get to you. Um, and that's all automatic and most of the time it works and it, it, it has always worked for me. But for some people, they have to explicitly set up a range of ports on their router to accept incoming connections. And is that in the preferences? I think that's in the Jamkazam preferences, yeah. 
um, there are these checkboxes, this checkbox about always using the same set of ports and then choosing the port range um, you know, where it starts. And if I had to go into my router and set up a port forwarding rule, which is beyond the scope of this workshop, I, I think there are probably forum posts that, that can help with that. And I can help with that too if you mail me, um, maybe. <laughs> but if I had to set up port forwarding in order to make this work, then I would want to use the same set of ports. I'd want to pick a range, and that is the range that I would use in my router configuration um, for the forwarding. Hopefully you can ignore this because it's a pain to diagnose and troubleshoot, uh, and most of the time it just works. Uh, what else is in here? Oh yeah, um, they have recently fixed the live broadcast feature. So <clears throat> you can use Jamkazam to stream a session to YouTube or to Facebook or other places. Um, I've used it exactly once. It was a pain in the butt because I don't have video on the computer that I use with Jamkazam normally, and it doesn't want to stream something without video. Big mess. Anyway, uh, it does work though, and people are starting to stream band performances through Jamkazam when they are all in different places. So that's super cool. Oh, I should show you a little thing about this interface. So. If you're in a session and you've got other people here, you can adjust their volume, uh, you can mute them, and you can accidentally mute them. It's really easy to click on this and not notice that you've muted someone. Uh, you can change the panning where they show up, you know, which, which side of the headphones they show up in. Um, there's also a mixer button up here which I can't do because I'm not the one who started this session. <laughs> um, I could turn on video, but I think it might mess things up entirely. You can record a session. Um, I don't know that sharing works right now. I haven't played with that. Uh, if you're in a session and audio starts getting glitchy, there's this resync button. I'm not entirely sure what it does. I think it just triggers another round of going to the Jamkazam server and establishing where you are and making sure that everyone can connect to everyone else. It has helped in some sessions I've been in. Um, and in fact, a couple of weeks ago, it seemed like, <coughs> excuse me, it seemed like we needed to resync between every tune. That seems to have stabilized, so I don't know if they're working on the server or what. Um, but when you're done with the session, you can click leave again. It'll ask you how it went. Um, that is kind of the basics of how Jamkazam works when you are using it. I don't do an awful, it's, I don't do an awful lot of messing with the settings while I'm in a session, except sometimes to adjust the volume and panning of other people who are in the session. It's, it's just, I don't have any hands when I'm playing the fiddle to click on things. Um, so if you can get people's volumes set before you start playing, that is ideal. Um, you can search for people to connect to. Um, Yeah, so if I knew any of these people, I could hit the connect button, we could be friends, and then um, when they're online, it would tell me, and I could invite them to a session, or they could invite me to a session. Um, if you go to the find a session panel here, you can look at open jams. Um, and this seems to be changing how it works every once in a while. It used to be that sessions with lower latency or that you know that where you would have better success were listed towards the top i don't know if that's the case anymore but um 
if someone has told you that they've started a session and given it a name, you can you can search for it in this field here and hopefully it will show up. I've had some issues with things I know were happening not showing up. Um, open sessions, you can at least see how many people are in them. Um, and in my experience, a session starts to fall apart after about five or six people. So some of these big sessions might not work so well. Who knows? They might work okay though. Um, and it probably depends on what type of music is being played and how tolerant it is of slop and whether people mind if they can't hear one or two other people in the session. I think that's one of the things that happens when a lot of people join is that some people can't hear other people. Um, maybe that's okay. Anyway, that is what it looks like to kind of really quickly set up Jam Kazam and, and look at what a session looks like when you're in one. I hope that's helpful. I'm going to uh, go back and try and record <laughs> the, the presentation with the slides again um, and then edit this in and see if that works and share this as a recording on my website. And now, assuming that I am back from the, uh, the recording I made earlier of uh, setting up the Jam Kazam client, since I can't um, on this computer share the audio from Jam Kazam in a Zoom recording or session, I made a recording about a week and a half ago with, um, with a couple of friends that I, I play with weekly. Um, and the first minute of this recording, it's about five minutes long if you want to skip to the end, uh, but this is just a kind of demonstration to show how it works. Uh, the first minute or so is how it sounded in my headphones during an earlier part of the jam. Because I'm playing the fiddle and I am getting sound from the fiddle around the headphones, so it's not being, you know, I, I can hear the fiddle even if it's not going, even if it's not very loud in Jam Kazam. So it was turned down fairly low and you, you can't hear it very well in the mix in the recording. But that is what I was hearing in my headphones when I recorded it. After about a minute, I switch over to a mix I made later of recordings of our, our individual tracks. Um, and that is how it would have sounded if someone else had been mixing the, the audio for the recording um, or something like that. I, I think actually I may have mixed the fiddle a little too, too loud. But um, anyway, I will play this. In the first minute or so, you can see the little signal meters moving um, because it is actually a screen recording of the Jam Kazam session that I was in. After the first minute, when I get the mix better, I've just got a still frame of, of that so it stops responding. But here is what a Jam session um, can sound like in Jam Kazam. I've got um, Dave Kramer on guitar and Paul Meredith on banjo and we've played, I don't know, three or four, maybe five times together now. Nope, that didn't work. Go back. Okay, let's see how this works. Thank you. 
was nice. That definitely had an old timey feel to it. <laughs> yeah. Now I've lost my presentation. Great. Uh, that's the wrong. There we go. Huh. How do I make it full screen again? <laughs> I don't know. Um, that'll do though. Um, so maybe I'm back from inserting that thing. Oh no, I shared that with YouTube. Anyway, um, let me see now if I can remember what kind of questions came up. Oh, right. Um, Someone asked about um, whether slowing down was normal. Um, and yeah, it, it um, even un unless you have a session where everyone has really low latency, it is really difficult not to slow down over the course of a tune. Um, just because even if you can't really consciously perceive the lag, you often are kind of chasing the beat of someone who sounds just a little bit behind you. So you slow down to uh, accommodate them and then you sound slow to them. So they slow down a little bit to, to accommodate you and back and forth until you are all kind of converging on a slower tempo. Um, where there's probably some way of calculating like at what tempo and what amount of latency things stabilize. I, I don't know. That'd be worth looking into. But yes, it is, it is very easy to um, slow down over the course of a tune in a, in a Jam Kazam session. The best way to not do that is to have someone who has really good internal rhythm, probably the guitar player, but maybe someone else, uh, have them be the one you are listening to at, for your time ref, for your tempo reference. And not, not to say like turn other people down in the mix, but just if you are playing, find the one person who you know has the good good tempo and try and stay in sync with them. And then if you are that person who is the, the timekeeper sort of um, make a real conscious effort not to change your tempo because other people are playing out of time, um, which can make it maybe a little less enjoyable for you as the timekeeper, but it does make it work better for the whole session. Um, and it's, if you've got decent, you know, if you've got decent numbers for latency, it's not that much of a drag on tempo. So you don't have to be too out of step if you are the timekeeper. Um, but you will have to con you know, be conscious of not slowing down because it sounds like other people are slower. So that's something you can do. Uh, Jam Kazam does have a built-in metronome function that can act in place of that person. Uh, in theory, it is like compensating for everyone's individual latency. So everyone hears the metronome at the exact same time. I haven't tried that much. Um, it's got a visual mode and it's got an audio mode and I find the visual mode a little confusing and I hate the sound of the audio mode. And I, I just don't like playing along with a metronome normally. Um, so I haven't really played with that much, but it might work. And if, if you treat it as like a, if you can like turn its volume down and treat it as maybe a quiet drummer in your session, that could, that could work. Um, someone suggested 
using um, the Strum Machine website, that which does backing tracks um, for old time music. Um, someone suggested that you could include that either just as you are playing or give it an input in the Jam Kazam. And since it can't hear you and slow down, um, that would be a good reference, better than a metronome probably, because it, it's not as distracting as a metronome. So that's an idea. Um, you could probably use, you know, band in a box or a pre-recorded track. You can actually upload audio files to Jam Kazam um, and play along with them. I think that was part of their business model actually was selling uh, Jam tracks where they, they've, you know, broken out like different instruments from uh, commercial recordings and let you adjust the mix and play along so you can drop the guitar out of you know, a Blink-182 song and and be the guitar player for that. Um, I haven't used any of their jam tracks. I have once uploaded uh, an audio track just to see how it worked, and it does seem like you could do that. So that might be a way to um, all stay in sync, or it could be a way to learn a tune. If you've got a, a version you want to learn, you could upload that and all treat it as if it were, you know, someone in the jam who knows the tune and play along with that. Um, what other questions came up? Uh, some people asked about specific hardware recommendations and uh, I've, I've listed some at the, the website here, the slowerthandirt.org slash jamkazam dash workshop. They're not really like specific recommendations. I mean, there are some specific recommendations, but they're mostly just because I have seen other people on the forums or in the Facebook um, user group recommending them. My own gear, I'm using a, um, a what is it? I'm using a Behringer X18 mixer can, um, as my audio interface because I, I have one and it, it's of the things I've tested that I have, it's the one that works best. Uh, I have also used or tested anyway some uh, Zoom, like an H4, H4, Zoom H4n, I think, um, as an audio interface. It did work, uh, and it worked a little better than using the the onboard audio from the computer, but it didn't work as well as the the Behringer mixer. I've heard really good things about the Focusrite Scarlet line of audio interfaces. Uh, the microphone I'm using is an Audio-Technica AT2035, which is, I think, I think it's exactly the same as the AT2020, but it has switches for um, low cut and pad, which, you know, just make it a little more versatile, but you don't actually need those. So the AT2020 is probably a good, um, basic large diameter condenser mic. Um, I'm not an expert in microphone selection, but I I have found that uh, a large large diameter diaphragm, whatever LDC stands for, a condenser mic that is bigger than a pencil mic um, is a pretty versatile microphone to have if you're only going to buy one. And I think an AT2020 is around $100. Um, but I would also recommend if you're on a budget going to monoprice.com and seeing what they offer there. They, they often sell, I don't want to say knockoff equipment, but some of it is. Um, a lot of the stuff they sell is inexpensive, versions of a thing that is adequate. So I buy all my XLR cable from them um, because it's half the price of XLR cable anywhere else. And I've gotten a couple bum cables, but I can fix them. So that's not a big deal for me. Um, I think I have one of their microphones that's kind of a, a cheap knockoff version of a Shure um, SM57. It's not great, but it was only 20 bucks. So you know, it's it's better than I would expect the twenty dollar microphone to be, <laughs> things like that. Um, or just you know, 
browse the Jam Kazam forums and see what other people are using and recommending. Um, what other questions were there? Shoot. I do not remember. But if you have a question about this, um, feel free to drop me a line. Uh, my email address is jdlarios at gmail.com. It's on the screen there, I hope. And I will try and answer it. Um, and I will keep this page up indefinitely. And hopefully I will link or I will in include a link to this video that I'm recording right now on that page as well. Um, so my apologies to the folks who were in the workshop today with the technical difficulties. I, I um, hope this works <laughs> and thank you for watching and have a great rest of Covidal tunes if you are participating in that uh, or a great weekend, stay healthy and take care. <laughs>